Hi guys and welcome back to another installment of Secret Graceland. In this one we're going to be looking at a bunch of cool things and I can't wait to share it with you so let's dive in. First thing I want to point out is something I learned recently. Let's do a brief recap of Grace Toof, who Graceland is named after. So she owned the property that Graceland sits on, which went to her niece upon her death. Grace never saw Graceland. She died in the 1920s and Graceland was built in 1939. She lived in a house in a different area of the property. So I follow Memphis's historic Elmwood Cemetery on Instagram, and I recommend it if you enjoy Memphis history. They post things about notable people that were buried there, and recently they shared this nugget about Grace who was buried at Elmwood. It's a notice in the newspaper about her death with a nice write-up about her life. It says, she was born in the Toof home that stood on the present site of the Hotel Chiska. This is such a weird, unexpected Elvis connection. The Hotel Chiska in downtown Memphis is where DJ Dewey Phillips broadcasted from and where Elvis's first song, That's All Right, played on the radio for the first time in 1955 and where Elvis scrambled to go to be interviewed on air last minute because so many people loved it. I actually got to film exactly where that happened in the Chiska because the building was renovated into apartments, but the literal one where Dewey's booth used to sit and it still has the large window, you can check it out in the link up here and in the description box. So let's go inside the front door and step into 1963. This is another amazing photo shared by collector Fred Hubri, who allowed me to share this. I love photos like this that show just a day in the life while Elvis was living here. Fred has kindly shared several photos from inside the house, including ones like the living room and the dining room where there is so much to explore, both of which I did a individual deep dive on and you can watch those videos. The links will be in the description box below. So I won't go into too much detail about what can be seen here, but one thing that jumped out at me from this angle is all the way in the back of the music room. So at this point, the trophy building wasn't even built yet. And if the trophy building wasn't there, the breezeway or the covered corridor leading from the music room to the trophy building wouldn't be there as well. So through the back of the music room, you can see sunlight streaming in, which is something you don't see today. Back then, they could walk straight out those doors into the pool. Here's what that looked like from the opposite side, from the pool area. The white wall and doors here are on the opposite side of the music room. Speaking of the music room, we can get a good look at it from the ropes, but lucky viewer Monica was able to go on a special tour that walked inside the room. She allowed me to share this photo from her tour of the side of the remote located on the side of the white TV that's in there it's this round dial. So Elvis liked to use the services of Memphis jeweler, Harry Levitch. Here is a custom pin Elvis asked him to make for him. It's a solid gold, 18 karat yellow gold guitar with tiger's eye inlay. The auction listing doesn't say when he wore this, but likely in the early days of his career. Like many of his possessions over time, he gave it away. This one went to his aunt Delta who lived at Graceland. Now let's get into the title of this video. A picture came up for auction recently and thank you to everyone that sent it my way. It's really a treasure and still has me puzzled. Let's dig into it. My first reaction when I saw this was, huh? I couldn't see how this was Graceland. Where even is this? I have no idea who the woman is. Take a look at the staircase on the right, the wood paneling behind an enormous gun rack and the doorway on the left side. This spot is right here in the kitchen. There are very few photos of the kitchen before it was remodeled to how it looks today. So this new glimpse is really special. So much of the layout of the house has changed and mostly on the left side in this picture. It appears that at this point in time, the jungle room den hadn't been created yet. So the kitchen wall was the end of the house. The kitchen looked out onto the backyard. The doorway to the left of the gun rack leads to the hallway underneath the main staircase where the bird room is located, as well as the mirrored staircase that we descend on the tour to go down to the basement. After staring at this several times, I noticed there appears to be a man walking through the doorway on the left side. Although there is a huge watermark on it, the description in the listing states that there is a framed picture of Priscilla resting on top of the TV. And something I didn't even notice until I was writing this video is the stairs. In the 1960s, see how they jut out at the bottom? The stairs come out farther than the wall, 
and are honestly a trip hazard. Now let's look again at that view today. The stairs are flat against this wood built-in that replaced the gun rack and the TV. Here's a look at that space in 1969 where Priscilla and her mom are sitting in the kitchen. Fun fact, that cabinet counter behind them is where fan club president and Elvis's friend Gary Pepper picked up his paychecks from. So recently I was watching a short video that was filmed throughout the Graceland grounds in the 1980s for a Japanese TV show. I'd never seen it before. It's on YouTube and linked in the sources if you'd like to check it out. It was mostly things I'd seen already, but when it panned around the jungle room, there were two things that caught my eye. There on the wall by the door. We can just see the bottom half, but I recognized it immediately because I've talked about this art before. Here is that exact art in a picture taken by a fan on a tour of the house in the jungle room in the 1980s. This is right next to the staircase that leads to the sun deck, and that is the bird room window. And it was actually in this exact spot in 1981 when This Is Elvis was filmed in the house. In a previous Secret Graceland, I show that the nail that hung it up is still there. I really don't think that this belonged to Elvis. It's kind of a common souvenir wooden art piece, but for some reason it was hung in different places around the jungle room in the early 1980s. The other thing that I noticed in that 1980s video is when it shows the long couch on the other end of the room. In this view, it still has the furry pillows that were around in the 1970s in Elvis's time. I thought it was interesting because if you go on a tour today, those particular pillows are nowhere in sight. I wonder where they are. The last thing we're going to look at is kind of unusual. This travel kit came up at auction recently and has an interesting little story. A woman had accompanied Elvis and his friends to Liberty Land Amusement Park in Memphis. Then she stayed over at Graceland. She says, I received this tan leather traveling kit personally from Elvis when I spent an evening at Graceland. I did not have anything for my stay over and Elvis gave me this kit. I asked him to sign it, which he did. And that is it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.